A man who remembers Allah Ta'ala in seclusion and thus his eyes become flooded with tears. Abu Isa at Tirmizi collected the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There are two eyes that will never be touched by the fire. Two eyes that will never be touched by the fire. The eye that wept out of fear for Allah Ta'ala and the eye that remained vigil, alert, vigilant throughout the night, standing guard for Allah Ta'ala. Abu Isa al-Tirmizi likewise compiled the narration of Abu Imamah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There is nothing more beloved to Allah ta'ala than two drops and two marks. Drop number one, the tea drop out of fear of Allah ta'ala. And number two, the drop of blood spilt in the way of the Almighty Lord which is on the battlefield. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The drop of blood that spilt on the battlefield fighting for La ilaha illallah. That is one of the most beloved drops to Allah Ta'ala. May Allah make us drop and drop and drop on that way, insha'Allah Ta'ala. Muhammad ibn Ismail al Bukhari and Muslim the Hijaj collected the narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya Abdullah. Recite to me the Qur'an. Abdullah said, Recite to you, O Prophet of Allah, and the Qur'an was revealed to you. He said, yes, I'd like to hear it from someone else. So Abdullah began reciting a portion of some Surah Nisa until we got to the state where it mentioned, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا How would it be then? When we've been a witness from every nation, and then we bring you, O Muhammad, as a witness against all these people. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah, Hasbuk, enough. And Abdullah said, When I looked into his eyes, his eyes were shedding tears, were flooded with tears. For indeed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he recited the Quran, he sobbed, he cried, he wept. In a narration collected by Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that he said, Muhammad sallallahu addressed us with a speech, a sermon like I have never heard before. In the course of his khutbah he said, if you knew what I know, you would laugh little and cry a lot. And thereupon the companions that were present attending this khutbah, they put their hands on their faces and started crying. And started crying. If you knew what I know, you would laugh little and cry a lot. This is the reason why he only laughed a little, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not like today, ha 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 ha, every second of our day. Someone says something basic, he starts laughing his head off. Where's the fear? Where's the emotion? Where's the passion of the hereafter? Where's the sobbing for the hereafter for the sake of the Almighty Lord? One of the companions, as mentioned by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi, went to Muhammad Salam's house and he saw him performing prayers. He could not even understand what he was saying due to his crying in prayer. He said, his chest, his internal chest, a noise came out of it, a sound like the boiling of a kettle due to the fear he had in his prayer. Al-Bukhari mentions a narration on the authority of Ibrahim ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Awf who said, food was brought to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf as he was observing fast, he said, Musa ibn Umair was martyred and he is better than me. This is Abdul Rahman speaking. There was only one garment he said to shroud him with. It was so little, this garment, that if they covered his head, his legs would remain uncovered. And if they put it on his legs, his head would remain uncovered. And he said, the bounties of Allah Ta'ala had been bestowed upon us in this earth most generously. I am afraid, he said, that the reward of our good deeds have been awarded to us in the life of this world. And then he started crying, this is Abdul Rahman, and pushed away the food and not even break his fast. Did not even break his fast. Why? Out of fear of Allah Ta'ala. And Abdul Rahman is one of the ten companions who's been given what? The glad tidings of paradise. Yet he still believed and acknowledged 
that Mus'ab was superior to him on the consideration that he was martyred and due to his poverty. May the Almighty Lord make us cry, weep, sob for his sake. And many of us say, or many men say, Ah, you are a girl, this is girlish or wimpish to cry. You know, you shouldn't cry, this is a girl thing. If you cry for a world issue, yes, it's girlish or wimpish. But no, the Muslim, that the most strongest, most courageous, most bravest warrior of all, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cried for the sake of the Almighty Lord. May Allah ta'ala make us amongst those who cry for Allah's sake in seclusion and honor us with his shade on the day, whether we know shade except his shade. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. And the last one, a man who gives charity so secretly that his left hand does not know what his right hand has given. The idea behind the left hand not knowing what the right hand has given is to point out the importance of secrecy in giving. And indeed, us Muslims give only for the sake of the Almighty Lord and not for the sake of people. In a narration collected by Ahmad al bayhaqi in At-Tabari on the authority of Mahmoud ibn Lubayd, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The thing I fear most for you is shirk, al-azghar, minor shirk. The thing I fear most for you is minor shirk. They asked, oh Prophet of Allah, and what is minor shirk? He said, al-riya, boastfulness, showing off. And indeed, on the day of resurrection, he said, when Allah Ta'ala is giving the rewards to the people, when people are receiving their rewards, He will say to those that showed off, that were boastful in their acts of worship, go to those people who you showed off to and receive from them the reward. Not from me. You showed off to this person, then go to him and receive the reward from him. You prayed for me, you get the reward off me, Allah Ta'ala. You prayed for this person, then go and seek the reward from this person. It's as easy as that. The evil of Riyadh, the evil tribulation, is that it in annihilates it destroys, it obliterates, and eradicates all the good deeds, the reward in an action. In an narration collected by a tabari, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, that riya showing off minor shirk is so inconspicuous that it is more hidden than the creeping of a black ant on a black rock on a black night. So the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, if it is so hidden, how are we going to prevent ourselves from it? He said to them, Say, Allahumma inna na'udu bika an nushrika bika shay'an na'lamahu wa nastaghfiruka lima la na'lamahu. Oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from knowingly committing shirk and we seek forgiveness from that which we do not know about. So praying, fasting, giving charity and every other act of worship the creatures should be solely for the Almighty Lord, not the ease and the eyes of man. Try to conceal, to hide your identity when doing optional duties in Islam. Try to save the person who you, give, you are giving charity to from embarrassment and humiliation. There's a righteous uh, successor that said, I used to give constant charity to the students of knowledge who were known to be poor. But in order to save embarrassment and humiliation, I would wait until they entered the mosque. And when they entered the mosque, and no one is looking, I would place the money in their slippers. And he did this until he died. And the only time they knew that it was this person is when he died and the charity was sealed, stopped. This is the way we should be with all our deeds, dear brothers and sisters. We ask the Almighty Lord to make us amongst those seven, all of the seven, to shade us on the day of resurrection with His shade, the day that there will be no shade except His shade. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. You are allowed now to ask any questions, so feel free to ask regarding the topic or anything else in Islam. Fadafaddalu. Without any shadow of a doubt, secrecy is extremely 
are important and much, 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 much better for your action to be accepted by the Almighty Lord or for it to be, you can say, fully rewarded, ultimate reward. Because the more you show it to people, the more you expose it or proclaim it, you can say, the more you are going to fear shirk, my shirk. Because how many times have people given charity and thus this person has allowed this person's charity to be announced and his name, whether it is on the radio station, whether it is to be seen by other people, an en masse of people, or to be heard before an en masse of people. And thus the intention of his has been played with and it diverted to something else. When people started calling him, Tabarakallah, you are a charitable person. No, brothers and sisters, on the day of resurrection, the first people that will be dragged on their faces into hell fire is a person, one who was a charitable person who gave charity in the life of this world. He will be confronted before Allah Ta'ala and asked, why did you give charity? He will say, for you, O oh Allah. He will say, you have lied. You have said it to be called. You are a generous person. You are a charitable person and thus you were called that. Thus he is dragged into hellfire. Another man who was a mujahid, he will be confronted by the Almighty Lord. After he died on the battlefield, he will be asked, Why, O oh servant, did you fight on the battlefield? He will say, Ya Allah, for your sake. He will say, You have lied, you have died. You have fought to be called a mujahid. Are you warrior? And thus you were called, and he'll be dragged on his face and into hellfire, thrown. A person who recited the Quran, Allah Ta'ala will confront this person and say, Why did you recite the Quran? For what reason? Say, For you, Allah Ta'ala. You say, You have lied. You have recited it to be called Tabarakallah. Your recitation is beautiful. And thus it was called, and you were called, and he'll be dragged on his face into hellfire. Likewise, the learned man. Why did you learn Islam? For what reason? For you, Ya Allah Ta'ala, so can propagate Islam. You have lied. He will say to him, You learned Islam for one reason. To be called a learned man. A knowledgeable man. A man of faith. A mufti. In other words, and thus you were called that. And you will be dragged on your face and thrown into hellfire. This is why it's important to conceal your identity. To protect. To save your act of worship. The more it is concealed, the more reward, inshaAllah ta'ala, you will have.